Hello everybody, this is Doug Putnam. I want to talk to you about IRB, Interactive Ruby. To start up Interactive Ruby or IRB, we simply type in IRB at the command line. If you're on Windows, you have to get into a command terminal. Once you start up IRB, all the commands that are, are the same on whether you're on Windows or Unix because you're operating inside of the Ruby environment. Now this prompt, you'll notice that the prompt is a little bit uh, sparse. It doesn't look like the one in the book. If you want to uh, find out what's going on with Ruby, uh, with IRB, you can do IRB dash dash help and find a whole list of all the uh, commands and options for this particular program. One of them is uh, prompt. You can have a simple prompt, which is what we're looking at. That's the default prompt. Or we can have a more complex prompt and the one we're looking for is this one inf ruby let's just copy that and so when we start this up we go irb dash dash prompt Oops, bad typing and notice now we have the line numbers the way we do in the book let's go some, through some of the exercises that we were supposed to go through in our first uh, initial assignment and one of them was to look at uh, and something like a number in 99 we'll all agree that's an integer and we can see what kind of methods it has so in Ruby remember everything's an object and every object has attributes and methods so we can see that a integer has a lot of methods these methods when we call this methods method here it returns an array an array is marked off by the square bracket here and the square bracket here and all the names of all the methods are in quotes. This lets you know that you're inside of an array. Arrays happen to be sortable. So if we want to sort that array, we would type in 99methods.sort. Now we can see it a little in alphabetical order. Notice that fixed nums have a, a, a methods like this. Percentage, which is the remainder operator. We have uh, ampersand, which is um, um, and and for doing and operations and bitwise operations notice we have um, a division we have shift operator we have less than these are not operators built into the to the in ruby itself these are not primitives these are actually methods in ruby okay so if we look at a string class for example we can see what methods are in the string class again that's an array so let's just sort it so we can see what's going on notice that again some of these things that we think are primitive methods in our language are actually um, methods and these are actually class class methods so the less than method is different for strings than it is for integers as in the number 99 notice also that some of these methods have question marks at the end of like instance of um, let's see, let's see here, I can't see any right now, or tainted, meaning that it came from the outside of your script, method defined, so uh, question mark is a valid character in Ruby methods, and it has no actual function, it's a, um, it's, you know, it's a convention to say um, that a boolean methods, methods that return either true or false, would have a question mark in them to make sure that you know it's a boolean method. So we can uh, look also at the math class and we can see that math class has all the conventional oops I made an error so when you make an error it looks like that we, we can see the trace back it says the wrong number of arguments so um, this is quite wrong so we can sort it now. Notice that in the math class we have also um, a lot of methods Define these look like primitive operators. This is a uh, regular express or approximation, and we have respond to same kinds of things. Kind of is a these kinds of uh, methods. We'll look more at them later. There are all your trigonometric methods, tan and sine, and so on. Um, if we want to um, look at a, the length of a string. Notice that the method is built into strings. Every string can tell you how long it is. These are not functions. These are methods that belong to each object. That's about it. This is a great little 
friend IRB. I suggest that you make good use of it. It's a lot easier as, uh, than creating scripts and running them from the command line, especially if you're testing short things.